Oh, God. This is going to be interesting. Hey, Linda, interview your boss and ask him how broken he is. Sure. <laughs> how fired will I be after this? <laughs> Um, all right, first of all, what the hell is your name, and how do you pronounce it? My name is Harald Ringi Thorlaugsson. One more time with feeling? Harald Ringi Thorlaugsson. All right. <laughs> um, what's the name of your company? Uh, we work at a company called Ueno. Why'd you pick that name? Because um, I used to live in Tokyo with my wife and daughter. who are back there. Um, and we, um, there's a neighborhood there called Ueno, and I like that name. Um, and then uh, we moved to South America, and when we started the company, I was living in Buenos Aires. And <clears throat> I remembered the name of uh, that part of the city in, in Tokyo, and then one of my favorite words in Spanish is Bueno, and it kind of matched. So. That's how we tell people to pronounce it. Bueno, but without the B. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so what does Bueno do? We're like a design thing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we do um, design and development of things. And uh, I don't really want to talk about that. <laughs> well, I just you know, want to give people some context. Okay. Why you're here. Okay, we design digital things and build them. That makes sense. Um, <laughs> but we're here today to talk about this theme, broken. Yes. <laughs> Do you feel like people can be broken? Uh, no, not in, in the sense, I think broken applies to um, Objects, people can definitely get cracked a little bit, but uh, or unhinged, and but they can come back together in different ways. I think. Um, yeah, broken is not a great word to use for a human because it implies that it um, there's something wrong with them, or even worse, that they can't be fixed. Are there some ways that you've needed fixing? Um, yeah, for sure. Um, I've, I have, when I was two, I was diagnosed with muscle dystrophy, and that's been sort of an ongoing thing in my life. Um, my, my mom died when I was 11, and um, I've been, I was a very active drinker and drug user for a while. Um, but you call yourself an alcoholic? Absolutely, yes. And uh, I'm depressed. So there's a few different things going on. So are those things that are, are just underlying unchangeable things about your life? Unchangeable, yeah, at the core, yes, but changeable in how you react to them. So you find a workaround? For most things. More or less. Yeah. So let's talk about the wheelchair. How long have you been in that thing? Um, when I was about 25. So muscle dystrophy is, has um, it's a few different ways that it can work, but mine is sort of slow. Um, and so I was walking up until when I was about 25. Uh, but the last few years of that were kind of not really walking that much. Um, so when I got the wheelchair for the first time, it was actually very liberating. So it was actually pretty great compared to the alternative. Why don't you use one of those motorized ones? They're harder um, to... 
to use in many cases. So it's hard to go in a cab or, um, you know, they're clunkier so they can't fit in the same spaces. So you try and avoid that usually for as long as you can. And with somebody who does as much traveling as you, I imagine. Yeah, it wouldn't... Uh, it would be worse in many ways, although it would be better in some other ways. Do you feel like people treat you differently when they find out that you're in a wheelchair? Um, sometimes, yeah. They, um, because I used to do freelance a lot, and I was kind of all over the place, and I wasn't, um, I used to work on projects for a very long time with people and just over video chat. It's always interesting then when, when you meet them for the first time, and they were kind of like, oh, and you sort of um, wait for them to sort of fake not noticing. <laughs> I think I had to fake not notice it. I remember, because we met on Twitter, and Hallie invited me to his office, and I had no idea, and I walked in, and you, like, there's this part of your brain that's just like, I'm going to be the person who's totally cool about this and doesn't treat you any differently at all. And I've, uh, since I've been working with you for so long, I've watched people have an array of reactions, like when they see you for the first time. It, it goes from being like overly nonchalant about it to treating you almost like a child sometimes. Is that a common? Um, yeah, and I've, I mean, I've been handed... Um, I, I've been given money in the street. You've been doing what? I've been given money in the street. Are you serious? I think that's just your beard, man. <laughs> I look a little scruffy. Uh, yeah. And things, I've been given things in the street, like sweaters and stuff. <laughs> oh my God. Dude. <laughs> We're going to take you to like Barney's after this and <laughs> fix you up. <laughs> um, sorry, you totally threw me off guard with that. Um, well, what else? Like, what other obstacles have you had in your career? Career? Yeah. Um, in my career, I, I started uh, another agency when I was... Um, 21 or something. We ran that for about a year. I had two partners in that agency, and one of them handled the business side, and he um, didn't do a very good job of it, and uh, was not a very honest person, and he kind of left us in the lurch, um, which meant that I'd, you know, after working 80 hours for a year on a, on a company that I was founding, I didn't, and didn't take any salary during that time. I was left with a lot of debt. debt. Um, and so for the next, I don't know, three to four years, I, I had to work off that debt. That was painful on multiple levels. But, um, yeah, it was hard. How did you get through that time? Um, I just ate a lot of noodles. Ramen? Yeah. Anything cheap. I, I, I had a spreadsheet. I, I had about $800 a month that I had to live on um, for rent and everything else. And then I paid about another $1,000 or something off of the debt each month. Wow. And this was while you were still in Reykjavik? Yeah. So were you just still like working your ass off and freelancing and getting better at design through that time? Um, yeah, and I was, in, I was in school as well. So I went to study some stuff. What'd you study? Um, I started in uh, engineering. I did that for three days. <laughs> and I was already like two weeks behind. Um, and so my friend was studying philosophy, so I did, went to study philosophy. Then once I'd done that, I thought I need something practical. And so I went to study finance. 
um, which, was, which was interesting, but not very interesting. <laughs> um, but I did like it enough that I was going to take a master's degree in um, economics. And then I, uh, I did that and didn't finish it, though. Didn't finish school? Didn't finish school. Why not? Drop out. Um, <laughs> I don't know, I, I thought, what am I going to do with this degree when I'm done? And I couldn't find a suitable job in my head. Um, the, the courses were interesting, but I didn't really see myself doing that forever. So I went back to design, because I was designing at that time to sort of to support myself. So what came next, if not a super fancy job in finance? Um, then I worked on, with, on agency, at agencies in Iceland for a long time, um, moved to New York when I was 28 or so to work at a, an agency called Cuban Council. Um, yeah, I was there for about a year. What happened? Uh, I, I got fired. <laughs> was that the first time you'd been fired? Yeah, that was the first time, not the last time. <laughs> and what did that feel like? Um, it felt, it feels very bad. Um, if anybody has been fired, they know it's not, I, I deserved it. I wasn't a good employee, but it still felt very bad. And then what happened after that? Because if you were fired from your job that you had a visa with, Oh, right, yeah, I got kicked and out of the country as well. You also, same day, are yeah. deported. Not same day, but same day I got noticed that I had to leave. Wow. So you uh, packed everything up, went back to Iceland. Yeah, I was, and was drunk for five years. And you were drunk for five years. Yeah. So how the hell do you end up in San Francisco owning a design agency? Um, and then, so I was a pretty functioning alcoholic, so I would, I would drink every day, but I was working. Um, and I would design drunk. Um, and have meetings drunk. Um, Were you just really good at hiding it? I don't know. Nobody called me out on it. <laughs> I don't know if they were all so nice or what, what it was, but yeah, maybe. Um, but I did miss deadlines, and I was not the best in, in some ways. But it still was good enough, maybe this, this reflects poorly on the design community, but I was poor, good enough in that state to get good projects um, and keep good clients. Um, and during that time, I, I worked on a lot of bigger projects for Google and more other clients and built up relationships that I then used when I decided to set up an agency. So what got you to become sober? Um, there was an event when I was, um, this was about five years ago. Um, and I was drunk and I had a fight with my wife and we kind of almost, we weren't married at the time, but we almost broke up because of it. Um, and then she was going away for a week to to Holland, and I just said, okay, I'm going to drink for a week, and then I'm going to quit. So you drank for a week while she was gone, yeah. and then that was that. And then I quit, yeah. Wow. Do you feel like you did it for her? No. I don't think that really works. I did it for me. But realizing that, you know, if I didn't, I would lose her. It was bad for me, so I did that again for me. <laughs> yeah. And so then you two ended up having a little girl. Yeah. And they're here somewhere. She's in the back probably watching Octonauts or something. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we have a four-year-old. And so um, my sober date is May 1st. Um, 
And her birthday is May 5th, one year later. That's amazing. Yeah, that was good. So at what point did you move, start Wayno? That was two and a half years ago. Um, I was in, in Buenos Aires, so saying, and then we, we've been moving around quite a bit. We moved every three months for a few couple of years. And, Why? Um, because we could. <laughs> Why wouldn't you do that if you can? Um, and then um, the projects I was working on were getting bigger and um, I needed more help to build them. So I thought I'll build this kind of freelance agency. That was the original idea of just, I'll just put a name on it, not my name, so I can get paid more. <laughs> uh, because people want to pay a company more than an individual. So if you want to be a freelancer, you should fake being a company. Um, and then I'll just hire freelancers. Um, and that didn't really work out, so we had to hire full-time people. So that was what, a year and a half ago? Two and a, two and a half years ago that, that we started. We started. I started hiring people. Um, first hire here in San Francisco was just over a year ago. That's awesome. So what's next? You're not moving every three months. Yeah, I have no idea. I don't really have a plan beyond this point. This is kind of my stretch goal. It's already been reached, so I don't really know what's next. Yeah, you've accomplished a lot. We have, yeah. <laughs> so humble. Um, do you think there are any takeaways that you'd like to give people about obstacles. I'd, I'd say that you've had quite a few in your life, and it hasn't stopped you, and you're actually doing quite better than a lot of us who've got it made in comparison. Um, I don't know. I was thinking about this uh, this morning, and I was thinking, should we end on a positive note or not? It's like a, a sitcom where everything gets resolved. <laughs> Um, and I decided not to do that. So sometimes life just sucks and uh, things break. Just suck it up. And just suck it up, do the work. Yeah. All right. You heard it first. <laughs> <laughs>